Hey guys, I get a lot of great questions on my videos and I, I try to answer all of them if I can. Every once in a while I may miss it and if I do miss something, I'm sorry. But one question that pops up a lot and I really want to address it is what is that at the end of your coax, that little black thing right in line on your coax? Well, that's a one-to-one -one choke. It's a, ball a little choke ballon made by my friend Tim, N9SAB. He makes those by hand, one by one, and, and sells them on his uh, eBay store and his Etsy store. They're hard to come by. He's a one-man show, but if you can get one, they're really cool. I'll put a uh, link in the description to his store there on eBay, and uh, keep your eyes out if you're looking for one. So what does a choke do, and what is it all about? Well, I used to be that guy that I would get out and just slap some, uh, slap the coax on the antenna, be it the, uh, the ballon or the unun or whatever I was doing. I would just slap it on and go without a choke. Yeah, it works. And, uh, and you can get out, but there's something called common mode current. Uh, and you know, I would notice it at times and sometimes I wouldn't really with longer coax. You don't know it. Don't you don't notice it. I'm sorry. But one thing is with being portable, shorter pieces of coax, you really do need, and I've learned this the hard way, you need to choke the antenna. What's the choke doing? Well, the choke is keeping the RF out on the antenna and out into the ether. You know, if you don't use a choke, basically the common mode current coming back into your coax is really turning that coax into part of the antenna. Yeah, I know coax is part of the antenna, but it, part of the radiating part or the grounding part. For instance, you hear a lot of people say, yeah, you don't need, you don't need radials with an NFED half wave. Yeah, this is true. You don't, but that radial is your coax and that's what's being used. That's what's doing it. That's why lately when I make my, my vertical, uh, half wave antennas or my, uh, NFED half wave long ones, I choke it. I choke it at the feed point and add a 5% of a wavelength, um, wire as the counterpoise on it because I'm trying to keep common mode current out of the, out of the uh, coax back up to my uh, transceiver and get it all out there on the antenna. It helps. It helps greatly. One thing I'll show you, a, a, a case in point. Here's, uh, if you look at this video, this part of the video right here, here's where I'm transmitting without a choke. If you look at the SWR, you can see the SWR getting up there. And this was a, uh, this was a antenna that was tuned with a tuner. I had perfect, I mean, one-to-one -one perfect SWR. Now take that same antenna, same setup, but with the choke. And then when I'm transmitting, you can see that the SWR hardly, it hardly raises up at all. It's because I'm getting all of that out into the antenna and out into the ether and I'm, and I'm using that RF energy. So I'm keeping that RF energy out of my coax and putting it out there. So the coax is now, everything's going out. There's nothing coming back in to the coax. You know, if you, if you look it up online and get it, here's what the, uh, the official word of what a choke is. A choke is an inductor used to block higher frequency alternating current while passing direct current and lower frequency alternating currents in a circuit. A choke usually consists of a coil of insulated wire often wound on a magnetic core. Although some consist of a donut-shaped ferrite bead strung on a wire, the, co the, the choke's impedance increases with frequency. Its low electrical resistance passes both AC and DC with little power loss, but its reactance limits the amount of AC pass. That's clear as mud. <laughs> so that's why I wanted to get on here and just kind of explain it nice and easy. Basically, what it's, it's kind of like a trap on a sink. On your bathroom sink, there's a trap. That trap's keeping the water from coming back up into the sink especially if you flush that toilet that's right next to it. That's a trap, a choke, the same thing. It's keeping the RF energy as you're transmitting from coming back up into the transceiver. You know, there's a lot of ways to choke. Uh, some people use uh, ferrite beads and, and clamp them on. Uh, some people wrap a coax around a, a toroid uh, and a ferrite tor toroid and make a choke. There's a lot of different ways to make a choke. Some people make them just out of air. Uh, basically, I've done it with an air choke where you just, I, I've seen different ways. Some people say eight loops, eight inches in diameter. Some people say nine turns uh, a foot in diameter. You can play around with it, but I'm sure you've seen this on antennas right at the feed point of an antenna. You'll see the loops and that's a choke. That, that is what's being used as a choke. You know, I've been out on the beach before and forgot my choke and just uh, hacking and whacking wrapped. Uh, I had an extra uh, spike, uh, basically a surf rod holder, stuck it in the sand and wrapped my uh, coax around it to choke the RF from getting back to my uh, to my transceiver. 
I've also made one. Uh, I've taken a jar, basically a, like a, a a big uh, mayo or pickle jar or something, and I've wrapped coax around that that way to to make a, a homemade choke to choke that RF energy from getting back into my um, my transceiver. I like to use, like I said, I like to use my little nano one to one choke that I have for low power. When I'm operating like 100 watts, I also have an LDG one to one that I use, and I put that. Like, let's say for a uh, random wire, I'm using a nine to one. I will connect it to the, um, t- the, the choke in line right after the nine to one and then back up. And then I'll use counterpoise wires with right at the nine to one. Uh, this is also the method for a random wire that LDG, uh, displays on when they're, when they're selling their, uh, their ununs and, and balance. So that's pretty much what it's all about and what a choke is doing. A choke is keeping RF energy on the antenna. It's that simple. It's just trapping it and keeping it from coming back. I didn't used to use them. I wasn't much of a believer, but getting out and operating as much as I do now portable, I swear by them. You know, there's one thing that, um, that it's a little acronym that I, I've learned lately. It's called ABC. And what does ABC stand for? It stands for always be choking and that's what i'm gonna do for this point forward for sure but i I hope this kind of gives you a little bit of an idea about what's going on there's a lot more to it if you want to do a deep dive i mean there's skin effect and, and things that that are happening with that common mode current coming back to you but just to simplify things and make things a little bit easier to understand when people are asking me what is that thing doing what is that it's a choke and it's it's uh it's for the antenna it's an rf choke it's keeping rf out there and putting it out and making that antenna more efficient and so i hope i hope this kind of explains things a little bit better and helps a little bit i know there's probably going to be a drive-by uh engineer rf engineer expert that's probably laughing at this but uh, but listen this is serious i'm just trying to simplify it especially for a new ham uh, a lot of new hams ask me some really great questions i gonna try to uh every few videos or so do a video like this and just kind of explain it in simple terms you know what when you get when you first get into um to hf communications a lot of guys in the american american guys that are moving from um from technician to general and getting into HF, there's some questions there. I had them too a while back, you know, when I first made that step and, uh, and, and didn't understand. And then after I got that basic understanding, then I did the deep dive and really got into it and really learned what things were all about. So hopefully this will scratch the surface for you and you will go out there and do that deep dive. I, I learn every day and, and I enjoy learning about RF engineering, HF communications, antennas, what's going on. And, and I enjoy that. And I, I encourage you. I hope that my videos encourage you to do that too. Don't just do what I'm doing. Look it up, question it, go out and look, learn and look up things and then go out and experiment. I, you know, I've seen a lot. I went through on this topic alone and I, there's a lot of guys talking about it and explaining it in, in, in some terms that are somewhat easy, somewhat of them difficult. I hope the little display I just showed you with my, uh, with the SWR on my, uh, transceiver, you can see regardless whether, uh, whether you think it works or not, you could see it right there in the SWR meter when I was, uh, I was transmitting that, uh, it works and it helps. It helps greatly. I mean, it's keeping that SWR down to where it's supposed to be one to one. And then, you know, all that RF energy, it's going out into the ether. Anyway, till next time. I'm Walt, K4OGO. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for listening. I hope I helped you a little bit. And uh, if I did, leave a leave a comment. And um, if you want to add more to it, please leave a comment. Until next time, talk to you later, guys. 73.